Hey there, Justin Gibbons here. I'd like to welcome you to my home studio in Thorpe, Washington. These are some of my studio mates that hang out with me and provide me with good source material when I'm working on my specimen illustration. Yeah, and before we get into my own studio practice, let me just give you a quick 360 degree view of the space that I work in here. And hopefully no one's gonna get too terribly dizzy. All right, so so I, um, I riff on classic wildlife illustration. I have a background in scientific illustration and traditional Chinese fine line painting. And so I synthesize both of those techniques or traditions within my own work. I typically work with ink and watercolor directly onto paper. And so more recently, I've really um, focused on observation drawing. So here in this example, I, I'm got this uh, pintail duck and I'm just getting into some of the feather details here. You can get a sense of that. So it's again, it's this scrutinized observation drawing. And I found that um, if you can get your hands on an actual specimen, you can really appreciate all the intricacies and details um, within the, the object itself. And that's just not really achievable when you're using photographs. Um, so while I was in JT Har, uh, this is really what, what probably kicked off this desire or interest in really honing my observation uh, skills is that I decided that I would give myself that, that parameter or assignment, uh, you want to call it that, that I would only limit myself to direct observation. And so I was going to really try to eliminate any um, reference to photographs or, and or other image sources when working on my artwork there. So I was hoping that I would be able to find all kinds of really amazing incredible wildlife specimens found in the desert, but the reality is that um, those things are just so elusive. So with the, maybe the exception of some chuckwalla lizards and some desert darkling beetles, I really had a hard time doing any direct observation of the wildlife. And so that meant that either I was going to work from memory or I would have to find other other things to observe and to look at. And honestly, um, being from Washington State, it's a shock to drive down to the south and to see the landscape of the desert. So between the rocks and the Joshua trees themselves, I was pretty floored. And that provided good fodder for me. And, even though I'm, I'm typically not one to paint rocks and I'm not one to really geek out on, on botanical stuff, I decided that the Joshua trees themselves just had so much character and personality and charisma and they almost seem symbolic or sinister, especially, you know, as the sun set and you'd see their silhouettes on the, on the uh, horizon and and you could just imagine them assuming uh, some sort of animated form. So I decided it'd be fun to do a series of imagined Joshua trees, more or less in silhouette, um, based on, I suppose, just fictionalized, a fic fictionalized uh, experience of these things. So I think the piece that is on display is maybe representative of, the, of that series. And for the first couple of weeks, that's what I was really working on, was just imagining how these, these trees might take on some other kind of symbolic form. So that, in a nutshell, is how I spent my time there. It's really a, a marvelous place, and I hope that you all enjoyed my tour and that you get a sense of, of what my work is all about and how I spent my time at JT Har. Thank you.